Say something, and then we'll. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it to uh, Diana because she's closest to me. Everybody for coming out. Um, I know it's looking pretty stormy out there. We're going to get some more rain. I'm Diane Richards from Haycork. I live two miles that way. And I love this place. To me, this is a sacred valley. So I love all of you that are here. It's really special to be with you. I'm running for treasurer. You know I ran for supervisor, and that is still election contest in the courts. Meanwhile, while that was going on, our present auditor came to me about a year ago, unsolicited, and asked me to run for treasurer. And I said, why? Why should I do that? And she said, because they're not doing reconciliations and they're not letting me into the bank accounts. I'm like, wow. So I started to look into what's going on in the treasurer's office. Before that, I had actually done a citizen, or attempted a citizen's audit, use, um, working with the, the past auditor, um, Marilyn, uh, Horn. And when I got into the, the books and backup, what I found was very interesting. Lots of things that should not be happening. For instance, we found that one of the department heads was able to buy tires, very high-end tires, for his own personal truck. And we just cut a check for it, no problem. I found that we had lost the ownership, basically, of our courthouse and our detention center uh, as collateral for a thing called a, a COP or a Certificate of Participation when we didn't want a, a municipal bond to save the hospital. They got $4.5 million at 8.5% with unbeknownst to all of us and then deposited that into the general fund. Again, that was illegal what they did. Um, and I brought that up to people and now they know. Um, the next thing that I found was that uh, there were, we were putting out thirty dollars to $100,000 a month in credit cards. It seems that everybody in this county government has a credit card, which is not an acceptable policy. That's, that's not how corporations run or governments run, but here it is. And so there was no backup. There were just payments going out to the bank. So I asked for the backup. I asked for access to the bank accounts. They said no. In fact, they stopped letting me have access totally. And then when I finally got back in, all the records I was looking for were destroyed. They weren't put on microfiche or e-file or electronic. They were absolutely destroyed. So you have to wonder what they were hiding with that. Um, and the fact that they don't let you into the public records, you have to wonder, are we the CIA or something? Why are they not letting us into the public records? Because all documents in our county government, all financial records are supposed to be open. If I get in, they will be transparent. When I looked at the website, the investments that the, the treasurer handles, they were not posted for two years. And when I brought it up the first candidate meeting, very soon thereafter they were posted the two, two years worth of the uh, investment reports. And then when I saw, when I was able to see them, that we have investments, for instance, um, in three mutual funds, one of them which is a French company, um, it, it's a, all, everybody on the board is French. It started under France. Yes, they have headqu you know, headquarters around the world, and everything, but they are headquartered in France. They're a Rothschild-based company, et cetera. And the other two mutual funds also purchased Rothschild, and it was um, basically absorbed uh, into that French <coughs> mutual fund. So we, we basically have $4 million invested that we get almost nothing back from, 0.5% uh, for 26 years. So when they claim that they're doing investments, it's just sitting there as usual. Um, and then I have also from a very good source told me that someone working in the treasurer's office was three times accused as an embezzler in three different uh, financial institutions. Now you might say, well, that's, how could that possibly happen? That's very shocking. Well, our own DMV here in California, in, in uh, Trinity County, they were arrested, charged, and et cetera, indicted, 
and found guilty of embezzlement. They were embezzling the cash payments and I've had several people tell me that when they went to pay their property taxes here in the tax collector's office in cash, they were not, their account was not credited. So again, we need to have some oversight and that's another thing. We do not have an oversight committee here. We should have an oversight committee made up of 10 to 12 citizens that would be appointed by the supervisors that would work with the treasurer to make sure what investments we're doing, what are the bank, bank accounts. So that transparency will happen. I would be open nine to five. Um, all, everything would be posted uh, on the website so you can see where all your money is. 100% transparency. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm Terry Meeker, and I'm your current treasurer tax collector. To give you a personal perspective on me, I was born in a little town on the East Coast, and my husband was born in a little town on the West Coast. We met in the middle of a uh, big town called Dallas. After visiting his hometown of Weaverville, it won my heart, and we decided this was a place that we wanted to call home, and we wanted to raise our children. My husband, Jeremy, and I have two adult children, a teenage son, and we're current foster parents as well. We are grateful to have this close-knit community. Today's our anniversary, and so a special thank you to my honey for spending our anniversary at a candidate's night tonight. So romantic. <laughs> Seriously, though, thank you for being supportive tonight and always. I look forward to a million more years. I've served in this, um, this office for over 10 years now. My finance and banking experience spans 20 plus years. I hold a bachelor's degree in accounting with the emphasis in business administration. I'm a, a credentialed California County Senior Executive through CSAC. The credential I hold through CSAC is a two-year program that has specific curriculum requirements that are designed for county officials and built on a foundation of leadership and policy competencies expected of effective county officials. The responsibilities of treasurer tax collector are established by laws, codes, and county ordinances. As an elected official, I have fiduciary responsibilities. My obligations are to collect, protect, and invest the vital revenues of the county. I have a wonderful team that works hard and continuously strives to ensure the best overall experience for our community members. I truly appreciate their attitudes and their, their service. I'd like to provide some clarification on some misstatements that were made and alluded to during this campaign. My team has integrity and takes pride in their reputations and all of the work that they do. We hold ourselves to a high standard. Any employee or volunteer who works in our office must be thoroughly vetted through the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice is known for their thorough skills and above stellar in, in screening out criminals prior to hiring. Everyone in our office has been cleared through them. Our current district attorney has written a letter in support of these employees verifying that no one in our office has been, is not and has not been under any investigation as my opponent would like to um, allege. Um, in reference to uh, the topics that she's referencing, those happen to be um, auditor topics. They are not pertaining to the treasurer's office. And as far as reconciliation, reconciliation takes place daily, every day, between myself and also the auditor's office. So that would be an untrue statement again. Um, as far as Natixis goes, that is a global company. That is not a French company. Um, having a degree in education and in investments, um, you would understand that a global company, global company can have headquarters all around the world. And with a global company, um, they can have a headquarters in, in um, France. It's okay, as long as those are U.S. securities. As long as those comply with the government code 53601, that's okay. We're in compliance with the government code 53601, folks. Um, and as far as cash is proceeding with that, that, that would be a completely untrue statement if that were to take place. And anyone that comes into our office, you're, you, I, I wouldn't go into an office and hand somebody receipt and walk, uh, cash and walk away without receipt. That uh, would walk away without a receipt. That doesn't take place ever. Number one, that violate um, quite a few cash handling policies. So that would be an untrue statement. Um, I believe openness, accountability, and honesty are what define transparency. I'm committed to fulfilling my legal obligation to collect and protect vital revenues of local government. I take my responsibilities seriously. I have the formal educational knowledge and the expert experience, which makes me the best choice for your treasurer tax collector. I look forward to, your, to serving you for another four years. Thank you.
Thank you, ladies. Um, I have a question here. What training and education do you have to fill this position as tax collector treasurer and run it efficiently? And I'll start with Terry. I hold multiple degrees as well as I'm holding this position for over 10 years. In addition to that, I hold multiple certificates that are specific to county government, specific to finance, and um, specific to government funds and investing. My experience with finance goes way back when I was an intern for World Security Fund. We actually um, protected American companies across the world and got them the financing they needed and the insurance they needed for their business and investigated their finances, etc. cetera. Um, I've run multiple businesses at the same time. I've um, established uh, franchises for many corporations across the United States, so I understand banking, I understand finance. Um, I'm able to go and um, investigate. Um, we're in, in audit. Thank you. Okay, next question. What college did you graduate from? I have um, college in both um, University of Miami, Miami-Dade Community College, and Aglala Lakota College when I lived on the reservation. Um, I was in pre-med, I was on the President's Honor Roll, Dean's List, and I also earned the American Legion Award for Scholastic um, Excellence. I did not finish college, I um, became a mother. And I have six kids, two of which are firefighters here. I graduated from Shasta College, Kaplan University. I have certificates from Texas Women's University. I have certificates from um, CSAC. From, um, uh, I've got quite a few certificates. I have um, three um, biological children, three foster children, and I have quite a few nieces and nephews that I've raised as well. Next question, do the tax collector's duties include investment of county funds? What licenses are held by staff to allow the buying and selling of investment instruments? <coughs> Financial Industry Regulation Authority, FEMA Series 7 or 6. Currently at this time, we do not have specific requirements for the licenses. There is government code that's specific to what a treasurer tax collector should have as far as education. And that is something that I'm looking at to adopt, hopefully as soon as in the next two weeks, to adopt the education that what a treasurer tax collector should have. Um, that's something that could be extremely detrimental to um, the county. These are schools, roads, and special districts. So if those funds are not handled properly, we all will, um, it'll be detrimental to all of us. <coughs> Those funds aren't being held, handled properly. We get a hundred million a year. Where is it going? That's what my job is to find out where that is. And nobody seems to care um, that are our department heads right now. The um, uh, I, it will be very easy for me to go become a financial certified financial analyst. I'll be able to attain it within two years. I think that would be adequate. Adequate that is for investments, and I just need to have the time in and take some courses, and I will be able to take the exam. I took a pre-exam, and I pretty much almost aced it. So I know I can do the job. Thank you. <clears throat> this one's pretty much addressed to Terry. Um, what is your view of the legal requirement for our Treasury Oversight Committee that is open to the public? Uh, Mrs. Breyer, is one in place currently? And if so, when does it meet? And are the meetings open to the public? I think that a Treasury Oversight Committee is, um, it's not a bad idea to have. It's something we, have, we did have in place for quite a few years. Um, the reason that we disbanded that committee was the fact that it was poor attendance. Um, I happen to, as Treasurer, uh, my doors are always open, and so I meet with um, other departments, special districts, and school districts. So the, when, I, when I discuss disbanding this, um, our county pool, um, the majority of that is made up of, of school districts, and so the school districts 
were it, they were in agreement with me at that time. They didn't feel that that was necessary to continue because there was an expense to keep that, and it was in low attendance. Can I? Sure. Again, this is a real issue. Right now, we have an independent auditing company that's been the same one for 10 years. The uh, a prudent policy is if you change it every two years or every year. Right now, they're giving each other awards. The auditor company is, is giving them an award, the board of supervisors, and they're giving the auditing company an award. To not change it is not prudent. It's not um, wise in any way, shape, and man manner. Um, the um, the uh, audit state auditor came in and found out that we have lots of um, problems here, and those have not re been resolved. For instance, too high assessments on mobile homes and not enough assessment on corporations, to give an example. When she's referencing awards, that's the GFOA, Government Finance <coughs> Officers, Officers Association, so the awards that the auditor's office receives that she's referring to, that does not come from our annual auditors. That'd be an uh, extreme conflict of interest that she's referring to, so that would be a complete untrue statement, so that's not where they receive that award from, so they don't give one another award and pat each other on the back. That's not how that works. So it's... Thank you. Um, what procedures are in place to expedite tax collection and ensure timely receipts? Well, on the good plus side, we do have where you can pay online, and that's good because up until recently, the office wasn't even open but for several hours a day. Uh, when I filed my candidate statement, uh, within days it had changed from just a few hours a day to 9 to 4. I would have to open 9 to 5 because that's how you get to go in and pay because every, not everybody's on the internet. The other thing is that for those that are sometimes losing their homes because they are not paid, a lot of them don't even get their notices. I would definitely be personally contacting them to make sure that they know that their home is in jeopardy because property taxes aren't being paid. So there's lots of things I would do above and beyond to protect pe people's rights as well as uh, collect the taxes. I think it's so endearing that my opponent thinks that he would like to take credit for opening up the office hours. That was something that was already in place, but it is very endearing. But as far as expediting the tax services, um, one of the things that we did um, during my time, we've been through a couple of um, bank mergers, and in addition to that, we went through a um, software upgrade and so it's something that some of you that have been here for years may have noticed that it used to take a long time for your your check those of you that send in checks it used to take a long time for your checks to clear well now we have a live system so if you come into our counter and you ghost your check now when you poke it used to be two separate systems so what we take the check and we have to post it into our tax software so now it's live so one talks to the other and so it's something so it expedites things really quickly so that's one thing in addition to the credit cards online that it much faster Thank you very much, ladies. Give them a hand.